Hi, this is Sean. Hi, this is Isaac. And this channel's called Wolf Dog Moon. And today we're continuing our versus series between these wrestlers. And we're using the Mattel action figures so that you can get a visual. But you're going to have to use your imagination, obviously. So, um, if you've seen our previous videos, then you know the drill. But we'll explain it in a little bit. But first, if you like this kind of content, smash that like button. Subscribe to our channel for more. Ring the bell so you get notified. And comment down below. Let us know what you think and share with your friends. All right, let's get into this. All right, so we have these two wrestlers here. We have Triple H, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. I think originally... He was the pure blood, right? That was his gimmick. And then, and he's been a several times champion. Um, the number of times this guy's been champion is a little bit goofy, similar to uh, Cena. But uh, we won't, we'll kind of just highlight that a little bit for you. And then we have Sting. Um, Sting was, this is the Crow Sting from um, WCW era and uh, so we're gonna compare these two guys in terms of we're gonna book the match and we're gonna tell you how the finish goes and who's gonna prevail and why and if you have a different opinion let us know down below this is just using your imagination and how to book the match and stuff and if you watched our previous videos then you get the idea all right let's get into this so we got Triple H and Sting here. Now, these two characters actually fought at a WrestleMania. Um, I think, I want to say, what was it, 2015-ish maybe? Something around that time? Um, 2016 or 17 or something. Alright, so around that time period, these two did fight. And what they did in when they booked this match, they essentially did... Um, a kind of invasion storyline where you have originally in WCW they had um, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall had come to WCW and they were the outsiders and then they end up joining with Hulk Hogan he became Hollywood Hulk Hogan and they formed the faction called NWO and so they were the invasion into WCW and uh, so, weirdly, they did a, a single, like a similar kind of, they tried to do this, a similar storyline for this particular WrestleMania where these two guys fight. And just so you get, understand the context, they got the finish wrong. They, the whole thing was wonky. It was weird. And um, it, it, they tried to make it make sense. It didn't. And the finish really didn't make sense so we're gonna have these guys uh fight it out from a perspective where you have triple h at his prime when you thought he was the best so you would have to rewind the years um, from that wrestlemania because he was more of a part-timer um special novelty match at wrestlemania when he fought sting so you have to do the same with sting you have to rewind maybe even before sting became this the crow version of sting so you're gonna have to use your imagination and so these guys are gonna fight in that way just like we've done with our previous um episodes in this series so it's a little bit long-winded but just so you get a clear idea of our um mentality when we're doing this in terms of this thought experiment so the way that this the, the match that they did fight should have been booked will be the same way this one we're gonna do is gonna be booked and spoiler alert sting must and will prevail in any situation or match with triple h not only from a story standpoint but logic standpoint and also because he's the hero on the hero's journey and triple h is not and Myra just let you know how she feels by chinking her collar. Now, Triple H, he did 
turned face at one point and he cut the strap and he was he had a short run um with he had a short run as the champion kind of as a face and it didn't really pan out so um and then sting was the face of the promotion i think at the tail end of the nwa and also the wcw <clears throat> so with all that as a backdrop the way i would book this match is yeah you can have degeneration x and you can have china <clears throat> and wh whoever else is in a faction with triple h including the heartbreak kid Shawn michaels so you can have that entire group and um <clears throat> what you would do is um triple h is a heel because that's what he really is He's even if when he's a face, he's actually an anti-hero. So <clears throat> you have him and his faction duking it out against Sting. Now Sting, he would get help from some other faces. So to equalize um, the unfair advantage that Triple H has, <clears throat> you would have Sting get some help from some maybe even some surprise people, maybe. Like, for example, a Hogan comes down to help. Or somebody like um, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Or uh, someone of that ilk who is pre predominantly a face. Would come down to kind of neutralize those other clowns that are outside. Causing shenanigans and interfering in the match. And you might even have one of the female um, wrestlers come down and take on China. So they're now neutralized. And then Triple H, maybe he tries to use his sledgehammer or whatever in the match. And that the referee prevents that from happening and takes it away from him. And uh, eventually Sting gets Triple H in the Scorpion Deathlock. And Triple H taps out. That's the way this match goes. And it's the way the match actually should have went when they f actually faced off. At WrestleMania, whatever it was, it's what Isaac said, 2016 or whatever. I just know that that finish said everything you needed ne that needed to be said about the wrestling business and how they were approaching it, and how they made the wrong call. They know they did. Either two things happened: uh, Triple H's ego got involved, and he went basically went into business for himself, such that. Um, it wasn't him just doing it on his own, but he basically used he used his ego and his influence as part of the McMahon family to basically usurp the match, the true match outcome. Now, a lot of people would argue that okay, you you have WCW and Sting comes from WCW, and now you have the WWE and their competitors. And so McMahon would always want the WCW to look worse by comparison. Um, but at this point, you have to, they're all under the same umbrella or they're not. So we're in this scenario that we're doing, we're, it's a thought experiment. So we're taking these guys in their prime and we're throwing out which company they're with. Do you want to jump in? Say it would, it's also kind of biased and cheesy and lame for of course the WWE guy would win over the WCW guy in the match it, well yeah that's why it's like they created a predictable match but not in a good way like this um, predictable is not a bad thing with the hero's journey for example and you're trying to create like Sting is a face he has always been a face and he probably always will be and so whereas Triple H he's he's a heel and if he's not he's still an anti-hero so in terms of a promotion Sting should prevail in the matchup and he always would where but what they did was they subverted your expectations and not only from a logic standpoint, but also from um, what you expected from the outcome of the match. Um, <clears throat> I think that 
there was too much politics involved. But the correct outcome, Sting should have overcome the odds with the invasion storyline they did. And similarly in this match, we're booking between Triple H and Sting. Sting prevails. And he prevails with a tap out. With, you know, Triple H taps out to Sting after doing all these shenanigans. And yes, he's an impressive physical specimen. And he's with D-Generation X and he's over and stuff. But Sting is more over. And even if he's not, you would want to push Sting over the top in this matchup. You got anything else you'd want to add in this, Isaac? Um, <clears throat> say, like, even with the, like, if the weapons were allowed in it, with the sledgehammer, um, uh, how come the, doesn't Sting have, like, a baseball bat or whatever? Yeah, he did have a baseball bat. That's, that's right. I'm glad you brought that up. So, as far as, like, from a hardcore standpoint... Whereas, okay, Triple H is using a sledgehammer. Um, you know, Sting, if that, if you're talking about the Crow incarnation, yeah. then yes, he has a baseball bat, and that's how he would neutralize, um, you know, Triple H. Now, the what you have to understand with the, with the Crow, um, you know, the Crow persona of Sting, it's, ba- it's sort of like, Okay, he was a face and he's this colorful character and you have this NWO force that's come in and taken over, but it's still very much Sting's promotion. He's the top guy and then but you had Hogan, but Sting, it's kind of like Sting has to find his dark side. So it's like a hero having to, um, you know, in, in, a, in, in a movie you might have this situation where he keeps getting defeated and then he goes off to find this master that can teach him this other style so he can take on the dark forces so he essentially his character is an attempt to he's finding this dark side within in order to combat this darker force and then once he does the idea would be for him to revert back to the original thing now they they never did that because him doing this he got so over doing it and he eventually actually got the title he he defeated uh, Hulk Hogan uh, with the help of Bret Hart so uh, he w- he got all the way back up to the top but there's the crow gimmick um, he could he didn't talk so part of it was that he internalized everything and it was like the pain of this destructive force of the NWO taking over the WCW. So from a storyline standpoint. And whereas, for example, Triple H, he's just a thug. With the D-Generation X, they're kind of like anarchists. They're like uh, Road Warrior, the bad guys in Road Warrior. They're just causing destruction and anarchy. And uh, they're bombastic and over the top and... Everybody starts rooting for them because they're they're breaking bottles and making fun of people and stuff and and that's why they're getting over. But they're heels. So despite them getting over with the crowd, as from a promotion standpoint and then in all logic and reason, you would always have Sting go over in this matchup. And for example, the fact that he didn't when they actually faced is still absurd. They can't go back and fix that now. You know, I, I would consider that a black mark on Triple H in terms he should have never let that happen. Especially if he, you know, if he has sway, if he has shtick or whatever they call it. Because obviously he's the son-in-law of Mick McMahon, uh, Vince McMahon. But he should have never let that happen. That was bad for the business of wrestling. So if you understand the wrestling business, then you would know what I mean. And so, um, anything else you want to add, Isaac, or... Um, I think more on the one weapon point. I think in the actual match, I don't think Sting had the baseball bat though, so it was kind of unbalanced and kind of unfair. Well, it was meant to. What the how they handled it was that okay, Sting lost because Triple H had all this and a weapon and 
Okay, so now they're both strong, but it still was the wrong call. And you know that that's one they should they would want to take back if you ask me. But um, egos got involved, and it you can tell about how the match played out. And uh, Triple H should have had more respect for Sting and his character. And the fact that he didn't says a lot about where the wrestling business was at that point. And you could see it was floundering. They lost CM Punk. They didn't know where to turn. They put, pushed this Roman Reigns character not long after. He wasn't ready. And so it kind of, they had opportunities to get back to basics. And uh, they, they floundered ever since. And uh, they're, they've staggered and stumbled their way. They they hang in there because for a while they were the only game in town. But now they have competition somewhat from people like AEW. But they have to you know you know figure out their own direction. So, but uh, it's just a fun thought experiment on this channel. So we can talk about we love wrestling, and we love wrestling when it's done the right way and it makes sense and it's logical. And so uh, if you do too, subscribe to our channel for more. And uh, in the meantime, we hope that this video finds you having an amazing day. And comment down below. Let us know what you think. If you disagree with us, put it down in the comment. Just tell us why. And, uh, and or if you agree with us, tell you know. Let's just start a discussion. So, uh, but we hope that you have a blessed day. Signing out.